Good morning everybody. As always, a very warm welcome to you all. I'm Bishop Dr. Peter James from the UK and this is my usual short sharp, sometimes controversial, few words based on the scripture. Today, as many of you know, we've been working our way through uh, Matthew, particularly the Sermon on the Mount. And today we're going to be continuing. We're picking up really on where we left off yesterday, where we were talking about prayer, the importance of prayer, and going to a room, shutting the door, and speaking to God from the heart in silence if necessary. Let's read Matthew 6, verses 7 to 8. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you need even before you ask him. You know, th th this is a, an interesting scripture because many people, if not all, have a subconscious conviction that the longer they pray, the better God hears them and that perhaps they try to batter down God's door with sheer persistence. He will, if they do that, they believe, give in. Or that the degree of a person's piety may be accurately measured by the duration of their prayers. This battering down of the door, you know, in, in, in my country, we, we often refer to it related to children. We call it pester power. And the child keeps repeating the same old thing, can I have, can I have, can I have, can I have. And you know, it kind of works, which is why they keep doing it. But, but of course, the analogy isn't really that accurate. We are human beings. <laughs> We're talking here about repetitive prayer to God, our Father. When I was thinking about this piece of scripture, I was hard picked, I was hard pushed to choose a winner in the long prayer contest. But certainly the, the Jews of Jesus' times pl played in the major, the major leagues. They had, they had, for instance, specific prayers to say at sunset and sunrise at the litany of 18 prayers to be repeated three times a day for starters in addition they had prescribed prayers for every occasion and long prayers to be said in synagogues one for instance recites 16 different adjectives of god well the practice of such religions as Islam, with set times every day to remember God, is in itself commendable, as it forces them to break out of their worldly frame. It forces them to remember God and, and reset their thinking. However, there is a downside. The downside, of course, is that such prayer may become mindless rote repetition that will simply slip off the tongue with no more meaning than how I drop a quarter into a parking meter. I mean, let's, let's think about probably the world's most famous prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Where we say it often by rote. How, how often 
do we actually stop and think about the words we are saying? I suspect not that, that often. I say the Lord's Prayer every day and I have to force myself to listen to the words that I'm saying and try to understand what they're saying to me. There are some religions that actually stress repetitious prayer, none of which is particularly meaningful at all, but more like a chant designed to induce a mystical trance. Now, there's nothing wrong with this as a form of relaxing meditation, but you can get the same effect almost using any word. Indeed, when I meditate, as I start, I normally repeat the same thing over and over again for a minute or two. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. But I have to remember when saying it to think about the words I'm saying. It is not an effect. Repetitive prayer is, is not an effective praise of God. For example, the Hare Krishna sect, who will say the same phrase for an entire day. They've got to be a top contender. Muslims will recite the sacred word he for many hours. Now don't let's fool ourselves. This is not prayer. This is self-hypnotism. It is intentionally designed to disengage the conscious mind. You see, I can be saying one thing here, and in here something else is going on. If I am to use a prayer like the Lord's Prayer out of my lips, I need to associate it, it with my mind and think about what does thy kingdom come mean. I'll just say it. In Kings 18, I think, I think it's 26, 29, we discover that the priests of Baal, who of course are pagans, would re repeat the same phrase, O Baal, answer us. And they would do so for half a day. And Paul, when he got into so much trouble, in Ephesians, repeated, repeated the supplicants of Artemis, shouted, Great is Artemis of Ephesus. He did this for hours. Read Acts 19.34. Now, to conclude, the beautiful liturgies of more formalistic churches can be profoundly moving. Unfortunately, the tendency is to say them without real thought or feeling, and this, at all costs, must be avoided. If, even those sacramental practices may be central to our life in Christ, Christianity is not primarily a mystical religion. I repeat, Christianity is not primarily a mystical religion. In our prayer, we attempt to engage our consciousness, not lull it, but engage our consciousness with God, not send it to sleep through inactivity. Let us pray. Father God, we give thanks to you for this, your word. We give thanks to you because we know it's true. We praise you, Lord, and give all honour and glory to your name. We ask you, Father, that in this short scripture, you will enter our hearts and give us rhema, our understanding, 
through your Holy Spirit of the Word so that we, Lord, can look at our lives and make whatever course changes we need to make. Lord, prayer is for the glory of you. So many of us see prayer as just us coming to you asking for things. Yes, Lord, we know that Christ told us we could do that. But we also know that you are in our hearts and already know what our needs are. So the need for repetitive, repetitive, repetitive prayer becomes somewhat meaningless. Help us, Father. Help us to improve our prayer life with you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we move on. <laughs> the uh, Sermon in the Mount, I mean, it's got it all, whether you like it or not, it's all in there. I have said before, and I will say again, for me, if we know nothing else of the Gospels, we must understand the Sermon on the Mount. It's Christ's own teaching, his words. And as Christians, we need to follow those. Wherever you are today, whatever your circumstances, I, I pray that you have an enriched prayer life today. I end with a blessing, asking Almighty God our Father to bless you all, to grant you his mercy, his forgiveness for your sins, to pour out his blessings upon you, his grace, and through the Holy Spirit, that you live this day with joy and peace in your hearts. Amen. God bless you all. Speak to you all again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.